emissions of carbon pollution produced by this plant, ozone, sulfur dioxides, nitrogen dioxides, particulate matter, and mercury, all from coal, exact a staggering price. Tons of coal ash, like the ash in your fireplace, except these, this ash, this coal ash is laden with poisons and toxins that sit in pits that get dispersed into the air, the air that we breathe, with little regulation to control it. Coal combustion has profound effects on our health. We commissioned a study in 2012 by the New York University School of Medicine that said that in the last five years that San Juan generating station cost the public $240 million in public health care costs. That's asthma, lung disease, heart disease, stroke, and hospitalization. The New Mexico Department of Health reports that one out of every four New Mexico high school students has asthma. I took this picture of Camian Woody. He's a Native American four-year-old boy. He literally lives in the plant's toxic shadow. He should be out playing, not struggling to breathe. Breathing, it's the very first thing that we do when we are born. It's the last thing that we do before we die. It's not only our air that's affected, but wildlife, food, and water sources are also affected by the San Juan plant. 75% of all New Mexico waterways are contaminated by mercury. And the New Mexico Environment Department has a fish advisory out on that. In a state that is experiencing severe drought, the San Juan coal plant consumes eight billion gallons of clean water annually. That's more than two and a half times what the Santa Fe, uh, what the city of Santa Fe um, uses. Unfortunately, PNM has operated with impunity, with little oversight or accountability. Just a few years ago, the New Mexico Environment Department accused PNM of 60,000 air quality violations. PNM settled for $6.9 million. That's equivalent to if you or I were speeding and driving 100 miles an hour and getting a 10 cent fine. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't change our lives a bit. So what are we doing about it? As a result of legal activism and political organizing, PNM recently announced the closing of half of that San Juan coal plant, 900 megawatts of coal capacity. It is worth clapping for that. Yes. It is equal to the size. It is equal to the size of an average coal plant. Three, uh, three coal plants. This plant is one of the oldest and dirtiest coal plants in the West, and is responsible for this brown haze um, that we now see at sunsets. Once accomplished in 2017, this will be perhaps the greatest environmental improvement in New Mexico's history. In addition to championing our cause in the courts and administrative agencies, we, and I really mean we, um, includes 34 other statewide co-petitioner organizations, including the lead author, who's right over there coughing, Steve Michael from Western Resource Advocates, um, filed a carbon risk reduction rule in the New Mexico Public Regulation Commission. This rule, if enacted, will reduce carbon emissions by 3% annually, which means in 20 years, that would be a 60% reduction of carbon emissions. It will start in 2014, and it will mean real reductions of carbon pollution. We are also exposing the vision of what's possible. You might ask, what will we replace the fossil fuel dependency with? The fossil fuel industry says we can't. We just can't. We can't transition. We just can't do or survive without them, but I beg to differ. PNM has 1% solar on it, in its system. Tragic in a state that boasts the sun Zia on its flag. We have been installing solar projects in strategic places to make the invisible visible. This was on the Crown Point Chapter House. This is a solar tracker that we, that we installed there. To show the benefits of solar today and for the future, we first saw solarized the Crown Point Chapter House on Navajo Nation. We chose that location because really a nurse said to me, 30 years ago, we never saw kids gasping for air 
um, and now we see it on a weekly basis. President Nixon referred to Navajo Nation as an energy sacrifice zone. We partnered with um, Navajo Nation, and now we are partnering with governments to push, push them to solarize their facilities. This is a picture from the solar celebration at the city of Santa Fe Fire Station. When you drive down Cerrillos Road, just after the Indian School campus, please look at the two solar trackers and 64 solar panels on the roof. We are supporting firefighters on the front lines of climate. As Tsuke Fire Chief J.D. Danron recently said, solar power helps us avoid the pollution of coal. It's a hedge against rising electricity rates and saves us money. These extra funds give us the ability to invest in safety equipment and protect our community from wildfires. We are touching the lives of firefighters through solar. We are turning despair and fear and angst into community self-sufficiency. We amplify these stories on the front pages of the newspapers for others to read about. And we put smiles on children's faces. We make government work for us. This is a picture taken minutes after a unanimous Santa Fe County resolution to part passed to partner with New Energy Economy and solarize com community buildings in, in the county. And I will say that County Commissioner Kathy Holian is here tonight, right there. Um, Yay! Yeah. Kathy is right. Our youth interns were high-fiving county commissioners. Circumstances have changed for most of us. So must our response. The only way to address the worst of climate disruption is to stop the burning of coal now. We must transition from coal to renewables as quickly as possible. We can do it. We've proved it can be done here on a small scale. And now together, we must commit to burning less, conserving more, investing in efficiencies, and solarizing this town, this state, and to serve as a model for this country. The fossil fuel industry says we just can't do it. We just can't make this transition, but I believe that together, with your help, we can. Yes, we've solarized Santa Fe County's first fire station, and we are exposing the truth of what's possible. Nelson Mandela says, it's impossible until it's done. <laughs> we can create the solutions we need today. We can transition from fossil fuel dependency to renewables. In fact, it's our responsibility. <clears throat> We must leave a habitable planet for our children. It's our choice, though. A sister activist, author, and biologist, Sandra Steingraber, who will be coming here next um, spring, the Lowry Foundation is bringing her, says, we are all musicians in a great human orchestra, and it is now time to play the Save the World Symphony. You are not required to play a solo but you are required to know what instrument you hold and play it as well as you can. You are required to find your place in the score. What we love, we must protect. That's what love means. From the right to know and the duty to inquire flows the obligation to act. Thank you again for coming. Thank you for being part of the symphony. I give you Louie Henna, my board member, um, uh, who will introduce Ben Ray Lujan. Louie Henna doesn't play solo. He's a river guide, a permaculture teacher, an author, and a courageous climate raconteur. Please welcome Louie Henna. <laughs> 